Imagine waking up to the sound of sirens, a blinding flash in the sky, and only seven minutes to prepare. No time to think, no time to flee, just a countdown, and then impact. This isn't fiction. This is the terrifying reality behind Iran's new weapon, the Fatah hypersonic missile. Capable of striking Tel Aviv in under seven minutes, it's one of the most advanced, unpredictable, and devastating weapons in the Middle East arsenal today. In this video, we break down exactly how the Fatah missile works, why it's so dangerous, and what it means for the fragile balance between Iran and Israel. Buckle up, this is modern warfare at Mach 13. The Fatah, which means conqueror in Persian, is not just another missile in Iran's arsenal. It represents a massive leap forward in missile technology. Unveiled in 2023, the Fatah missile boasts speeds exceeding Mach 13, that's over 16,000 kilometers per hour. Unlike conventional ballistic missiles that follow a predictable arc, Fatah is maneuverable. It can zigzag mid-air, making it nearly impossible for even the most advanced missile defense systems to track or intercept. Iran claims the Fatah can bypass every known missile defense system on the planet, including Israel's Iron Dome, David Sling, and even the US THAAD system. But is that just propaganda? Or is the world witnessing the arrival of unstoppable warfare? The missile was reportedly developed by Iran's elite Revolutionary Guard Corps Aerospace Division, with technological inputs drawn from years of domestic ballistic missile development and alleged reverse engineering of foreign tech. With a reported range of up to 1,400 kilometers and a warhead capable of delivering conventional or potentially unconventional payloads, Fatah adds an unpredictable new layer to Iran's military strategy. To understand why the Fatah is so dangerous, we need to understand hypersonic missile technology. Hypersonic missiles fall into two primary categories, hypersonic cruise missiles and glide vehicles. Fatah is believed to be a glide vehicle. This means it gets launched like a traditional ballistic missile but instead of arcing and falling, it re-enters Earth's atmosphere and glides at extreme speeds, all while changing direction. This makes tracking and intercepting it a nightmare. The physics behind it are staggering, air compression, plasma formation, surface heating up to thousands of degrees, and yet, somehow this weapon is able to remain stable, maneuverable, and deadly accurate. What sets hypersonics apart isn't just speed, it's trajectory. Unlike ICBMs that follow a high arc, hypersonic glide vehicles stay in the atmosphere, flying too high for many conventional interceptors and too low for traditional space-based defense systems. From launch sites deep within Iran, Tel Aviv is roughly 1,600 kilometers away. At Mach 13, the journey takes just under seven minutes that's the kind of speed where hesitation is fatal. Israel's early warning radar systems would detect the launch within seconds. But even with immediate detection, the remaining response time is critically short. By the time Israel confirms the missile's type and destination, it's already entering final approach. This is what military strategists call a use-it-or-lose-it window, where every second determines whether lives are saved or lost. Additionally, the missile's glide and maneuver features mean that even accurate trajectory prediction becomes difficult. With just minutes on the clock, that uncertainty makes evacuation, counter-strike, or even confirmation of the threat nearly impossible. What makes this even more complicated is the geography. The missile could take multiple trajectories over Iraq, through Jordan, or from other less expected vectors adding further complexity to defense planning. Civil defense readiness in Israel has evolved rapidly, but the sheer pace of a hypersonic attack compresses all decision-making. Emergency alerts, evacuation signals, counter-response coordination. Every protocol must now operate at a pace never before required. Even a delay of 30 seconds in decision-making could mean devastation on a scale not seen in the region's history. The missile's speed doesn't just challenge technology, it challenges human reaction time and coordination. The unveiling of the Fatah missile wasn't just a military achievement, it was a geopolitical shockwave. It signaled to the world that Iran has entered the hypersonic arms race, joining nations like Russia and China. This technology changes the rules. Suddenly, targets once considered unreachable or at least defensible, are now within minutes of annihilation. Gulf countries, NATO allies, US bases in the Middle East, all must rethink their strategies. For Israel, it represents an existential threat. For Iran, it's a powerful message. 
We are not just regional players. We are global contenders. Fatah also complicates diplomatic talks around Iran's nuclear program. With such rapid delivery capability, the threat of a potential nuclear tip missile looms larger than ever, regardless of Iran's official position on weaponization. Its introduction has triggered a domino effect in regional military planning. Countries like Saudi Arabia and the UAE have ramped up their investments in cutting-edge missile defense systems. The US has increased joint military drills with its allies and repositioned naval assets to monitor Iranian launches more closely. Fatah isn't just reshaping Iran's image, it's reshaping global defense doctrines. The world's military playbook just got rewritten, and Fatah is on the cover. Israel is home to one of the most sophisticated, multi-layered missile defense systems in the world. The Iron Dome intercepts short-range rockets, David Sling handles mid-range threats, and the Aero system targets high-altitude ballistic missiles, even those in space. But can any of them stop a hypersonic glide vehicle moving at Mach 13? The answer? Not reliably. Hypersonic missiles like Fatah don't follow predictable arcs, and they travel at blistering speeds within the atmosphere, making them incredibly difficult to track and intercept. The Iron Dome is designed for slower, shorter-range rockets. David Sling has limited engagement speed. Even the Aero 3, Israel's most advanced interceptor, was built to counter traditional ballistic threats, not highly maneuverable hypersonic glide vehicles. This creates a dangerous gap in Israel's defensive umbrella, one that adversaries like Iran are now aiming to exploit. To close that gap, Israel has started exploring new technologies, laser-based defenses, electromagnetic railguns, and AI-enhanced radar systems. But these are still in development. The Fatah is operational now. Military analysts warn that Israel's only real defense against Fatah today may be deterrence, a credible threat of retaliation. In short, maintaining peace by ensuring that any Iranian launch is met with overwhelming response. But in a region where tensions run high, trust in deterrence alone is a dangerous game. And as Iran grows bolder, the margin for error shrinks. Beyond strategy, beyond military hardware, lies a very human cost. The psychological toll of living under the threat of near-instant annihilation is profound. In cities like Tel Aviv, the looming presence of missiles like Fatah has triggered a resurgence in civilian preparedness programs. Air raid drills, shelter construction, and public education on emergency response have intensified. Families sleep with their phones on, children learn to identify different alarm sounds, elderly citizens must rehearse rapid descent into shelters. Anxiety and trauma are becoming a shared reality. This isn't just limited to Israel. Iranian civilians too are aware that retaliation would be swift and severe. The hypersonic arms race breeds fear on both sides, fueling nationalism, paranoia, and political volatility. It's not just a question of who has the stronger missile, it's about who pays the price when it's launched. And in every scenario, it's the civilians caught in the middle who suffer the most. With Fatah in the field, a new arms race has officially begun. But unlike the Cold War, this isn't just about numbers, it's about speed, intelligence, and precision. Nations are now investing billions into next-gen missile defense, laser systems that fire at the speed of light, AI-powered radar tracking, and even space-based interceptors that can neutralize hypersonic threats before they reach the upper atmosphere. Cyber warfare will become central. The best way to stop a hypersonic missile might not be to shoot it down, but to prevent its launch altogether via sabotage or cyber intrusion. Diplomacy, too, will evolve. Future negotiations won't just discuss nuclear enrichment or warhead limits. They'll need new frameworks for hypersonic weapons, AI in combat, and near-instant delivery systems. As these technologies develop, one question will define the next decade. Can we manage peace faster than we can deliver war? Beyond military and political implications, the human impact of the Fatah missile and the Iran-Israel standoff cannot be ignored. In Tel Aviv, families live under constant fear. Missile drills are frequent. Emergency apps have become as important as weather updates. Schools conduct routine shelter-in-place training. The anxiety is real and growing. In Iran, the narrative is different. 
Many view the missile as a source of national pride, a symbol of resilience in the face of sanctions and isolation. But not everyone supports the path of escalation. There are voices, brave and bold, calling for peace, not power. Meanwhile, global public opinion remains divided. Western powers condemn Iran's advancements. Some in the global south see it as leveling an unfair playing field. As the geopolitical chessboard tilts, ordinary people are left to hope that their leaders don't gamble their futures. Tracking a hypersonic missile like Fatah is not just about radar and surface-based sensors. It's about space-based surveillance, real-time data fusion, and digital espionage. Intelligence agencies, from Mossad to the CIA, are now pouring resources into detecting and interpreting signs of a possible launch. This includes satellite imagery of missile bases, cyber infiltration of control systems, and even human intelligence operations near test sites. Artificial intelligence is also playing a role. AI systems can analyze thermal data, satellite photos, and signal intercepts to predict when Iran might conduct another test, or worse, a live strike. This invisible war of information could determine who reacts fast enough and who gets caught off guard. What's more, many of these operations are multinational. The US shares infrared tracking data with European partners. Israel collaborates with India and Australia on missile threat modeling. These alliances create a layered shield of shared awareness, where a launch in one part of the world sets off silent alerts everywhere else. But even this tech-driven vigilance has its limits. Hypersonic missiles challenge not only the laws of physics, but also the rules of intelligence. Reaction time, false alarms, and deliberate misinformation can tilt the balance dangerously close to conflict. Every missile test or strike threat from Iran shakes more than the military world. It shakes global markets. Oil prices are highly sensitive to Middle East conflict. The Strait of Hormuz, through which one-fifth of the world's oil supply passes, is a key vulnerability. One missile near that corridor could trigger panic, send prices soaring, and disrupt supply chains worldwide. Insurance premiums for commercial flights over conflict zones rise. Regional tourism vanishes. Tech stocks plummet if semiconductor production in nearby regions is threatened. The Fatah missile may be a military weapon, but its shockwaves reach into wallets and portfolios worldwide. The world isn't just watching this conflict unfold. It's trying to intervene, contain, or shape it. At the UN, Western powers have called for stricter sanctions and missile technology bans. Meanwhile, Russia and China push back, accusing the West of double standards and highlighting US hypersonic tests. Countries like Qatar, Turkey, and Oman attempt mediation, hosting back-channel talks. While these often yield limited progress, they show that global diplomacy is still trying to keep pace with military escalation. Iran insists it has a right to defend itself, while Israel argues it must prepare for preemptive action. As speeches echo in marble chambers, the real negotiations often happen in back rooms and quiet corridors, where deals can avert disaster. The age of hypersonics isn't coming. It's already here. And Iran's Fatah missile is leading that charge in the Middle East. But with great speed comes even greater risk. In a world where wars can be decided in mere minutes, we face a terrifying new reality. Will diplomacy keep pace with destruction? Or are we already living in a countdown? If you found this video insightful, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you don't miss our next deep dive. For a closer look into the broader conflict, check out our next video, Iran-Israel Missile Conflict Explained, where we break down the full timeline, motivations, and what's coming next in this high-stakes standoff.